What's up guys, welcome back to part two of our exploration into robotic hands. In the first video, we covered the foundational aspects of these machines, including their applications, types, actuation methods, and the electronics and programming that make them work. In this video, I want to focus more on the design process and explore the challenges of modeling a robotic hand while balancing functionality with realism. I'll also share my own experience building a robotic hand, detailing the steps, obstacles, and insights I gained throughout the process. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at what goes into creating a robotic hand. Designing a robotic hand is a multifaceted process that requires careful planning, a deep understanding of human anatomy, and the use of advanced tools like CAD or computer-aided design. The process typically begins with conceptualizing the hand's functionality and structure, including sketching initial ideas and defining key objectives such as dexterity, strength, and intended use. CAD software plays a crucial role in this phase, enabling precise modeling of components, simulation of movements, and detection of potential interferences or design flaws. One of the most intricate aspects of designing a robotic hand is replicating the kinematic chains of the fingers. These chains consist of interconnected segments that mimic the joints and bones of a human finger, allowing realistic motion. Designers must ensure that each segment moves smoothly without mechanical interference while maintaining proportional accuracy to achieve lifelike functionality. The complexity arises when aiming for fine motor control, such as finger splaying, thumb opposability, palm movement, and wrist rotation which are all essential for performing tasks that require dexterity and grip variability. Outside of computer-aided design, the design process may involve creating physical prototypes, testing different materials, and studying biomechanics to ensure compatibility with the human form. Decisions about realism also play a significant role. A simple blocky hand might prioritize functionality and durability, while a lifelike hand requires intricate detailing to emulate the appearance and natural movement of human hands. Achieving these goals requires balancing precision engineering, anatomical understanding, and creativity, making the design of a robotic hand a true blend of art and science. When it came time to build my own robotic hand, I wanted to focus on experimentation and learning the basics of how these intricate machines are assembled. I initially started with a design by YouTuber Will Cogley, whose robotic hand caught my attention with its precision, functionality, and its lifelike design. However, I quickly realized that the design was too complex and expensive for my needs, requiring a large number of parts, custom PCBs, and multiple servo motors, which would have led to a very expensive project. To simplify things, I pivoted to the open source InMov robot design, which made for a better and inexpensive starting point while still being highly functional and fairly lifelike. The process began with 3D printing the necessary components, followed by painstakingly sanding and filing the parts to ensure a proper fit during assembly. A servo for wrist rotation was included in the design, but ultimately I decided not to focus on wrist movement for now. For the fingers, I carefully lined tendon cables from fishing line through the components, which is a common design for many robotic hands due to its simplicity and cost-effective design. Before fully assembling the hand, I made sure that the cables worked by manually actuating the fingers to ensure proper actuation was achievable. Finally, I wired the electronics, which proved to be its own challenge due to initial positioning of the servos as well as determining the required rotation necessary to fully actuate the fingers. This hands-on experience taught me the intricacies of building a robotic hand while providing valuable insights into the challenges and rewards of the design and assembly process.
Building a robotic hand is a rewarding but challenging process. And throughout my build, I encountered several obstacles that tested both my patience and problem solving skills. One of the first challenges I faced was lining the tendon cables through the hand and fingers. I initially separated the cables tied together at the tip of each finger, but this method didn't work as expected. After some trial and error, I switched to a single cable superglued at the tip of the finger, which allowed for much smoother and more reliable actuation. Securing the tendon cables and threading them through the small channels in the hand was another difficulty. With five cables in total and two channels per finger, the tight spaces made it challenging to route the cables without interferences. Another issue involved servo pulley positioning and the correct tensioning of the cables. I spent a lot of time trying to adjust the servos to get the right tension, initially attempting to modify the servos themselves. After some trial and error, I realized that the starting orientation of the servos played a crucial role in achieving proper tension across the cables. The servo rotation was another issue that needed careful attention to avoid damaging the components. Finding the right servo angle for proper finger actuation took some time, as I needed to actuate the fingers slowly in small increments, testing each angle until I found the sweet spot for full motion without overdoing the servos or breaking the tendon cables. Lastly, I encountered problems with the pinky finger. The small pieces kept breaking when I drilled them. As a solution, I replaced the metal rods with printer filament melted at the ends to create a pin joint. This modification was more flexible and durable, allowing for smoother movement and fewer breakages during the build process. Each of these challenges required a lot of adjustment and learning, but ultimately, they helped me better understand the intricacies of building a functional robotic hand. Moving forward, my plans for the robotic hand extend beyond just making the fingers actuate. I'm excited to experiment with various control methods to make it more responsive and versatile. These methods include remote control, where the hand can be operated manually through a joystick, control glove, or other interface. Hand recognition, allowing the hand to interact with objects based on visual cues. And my ultimate goal is to control the hand via AI, or artificial intelligence, which will enable the hand to learn and adapt to new tasks autonomously through machine learning. By integrating these control systems, I hope to create a hand that not only replicates human-like motion, but also responds intelligently to its environment. Connecting a robotic hand to a robotic arm adds another layer of complexity and functionality. The hand as an end effector is the primary tool used to interact with the outside world, whether it's grasping, manipulating, or releasing objects. But the arm itself provides the range of motion and support needed for the hand to operate effectively. In this sense, the hand is intricately connected to the arm, acting as the specialized component that completes tasks once the arm has positioned itself in the right location. The arm serves as the foundation for stability and reach, while the hand provides the fine motor control and dexterity necessary for precise manipulation. Together, the robotic arm and hand form a cohesive system where the arm handles broad movements and the hand fine-tunes those actions with detailed, complex gestures. This connection allows for even more advanced tasks, such as delicate surgery, assembling intricate parts, or even performing human-like gestures, expanding the capabilities of the entire robotic system. When building a robotic hand or embarking on any robotics project, there are a few pieces of advice that I'd like to share from my own experience. These tips should help you avoid some of the mistakes I made and make the process a bit smoother for yourself. 1. Start with the cheaper route. If you're just getting started, I recommend opting for the cheaper route by using a 3D printer if possible. It's a great way to test out designs without committing to expensive parts. 3D printing also allows you to easily iterate and make adjustments, which is invaluable when you're learning and experimenting. Two. If designing your own hand, make sure that you can easily assemble and disassemble it. A key takeaway from using the InMov robot design is to ensure that the design can be disassembled. One of the disadvantages of the InMov design is its permanence, with parts being glued or permanently fixed together. While this is great for durability, it makes maintenance and troubleshooting much harder. Plan your build so that the parts can be easily taken apart or repaired or modified without needing to start from scratch. 
Three, use a plug-in AC-DC power source. I highly recommend using a plug-in AC-DC power source instead of relying on batteries. Batteries are fine for basic testing, but they'll quickly lose charge and cause erratic behavior of your servo motors. A stable power source is crucial to ensure that your servo motors operate correctly and consistently during the build process and operation. 4. Arduino and Servo Motor Connections On a personal note, when working with Arduino to control multiple servos, make sure that the negative signal from the servos is connected to the ground of the Arduino. This is an often overlooked step that I made, which will cause the servo to rotate at random. But ensuring that this connection is properly made will prevent that issue altogether and the servo will operate as intended. These simple pieces of advice will help make your build smoother and more efficient, especially if you're just starting out. Robotics can be a complex and challenging field, but with a little preparation and the right approach, you'll be well on your way to creating a functional robotic hand. In conclusion, building and experimenting with a robotic hand has been an incredible journey of learning and discovery. From the initial inspiration to the challenges of designing and actuating a functional hand, every step has reinforced how complex and sophisticated the human hand is, and how incredible it is that robotics is moving closer and closer to replicating it. By exploring the anatomy, design, and control systems of robotic hands, we've seen how engineering and innovation come together to bring machines to life. As I continue to experiment with various control methods and integrate the hand with a robotic arm, I'm excited to push the boundaries of what this technology can achieve. Whether it's for prosthetics, research, or industrial applications, robotic hands hold vast potential to revolutionize how we interact with machines and enhance the way we live. Thank you for joining me on this exploration into the world of robotic hands. Stay tuned for more updates and deeper dives into humanoid robotics as we continue to learn, build, and innovate together.